Hello, nice to have you here. Today I have uh, something totally different and new for my channel. Uh, this is a video I want to use as a kind of a dev vlog video. Um, I hope you enjoy it and uh, let's get started. Now, you're probably wondering uh, what kind of dev blog this should be and uh, I'm actually working on a solitaire board game, a war game, a solitaire war game um, which uh, as you can see I call Spanish Skies right now. This is a working title. Uh, I believe I should um, find a better one at some point but this is inspired by the the german uh, song spaniens himmel which actually literally means uh, spain's sky uh, i think it became quite popular even in the us uh, in the context of the spanish civil war and the, the Spanish Civil War is what my game shall be about. So uh, let's join in. Uh, first, we're going to take a look at the idea here. As I said, um, I want to do a game on the Spanish Civil War. Why is this? And you might ask, aren't there already good games about the Spanish Civil War? Yes, indeed. And I have here... Uh, links to two geek lists on board game geek which list uh, games about the spanish civil war you can pause the video type them out or maybe i put them in the video description so you can just click them there and have a look uh, which kind of games are already out there so why do i want to do another game now uh, before I answer these questions, let's take a look on uh, four games I find very interesting that uh, already exist out there on the topic of the Spanish Civil War. This is uh, Arriba España, which has first been published in 1997, designed by Brian Train and published by various companies. Um, you can see the map there, it's area control, a game with an odds-based combat results table and um, yeah, the diplomacy has its part in it and there are the, the various factions on both sides that uh, played a major role during the Spanish Civil War and uh, the factions... Um, uh, determine uh, which units can stack together which not and there is some kind of support system so for the republic especially um, the higher the support the better uh, i guess and then there is an event a dice roll uh, on the left side of the map you can see the event table with this yellow light yellow and blue stripes so you're going to roll every turn, I believe, and uh, check if there is any event that is, of course, historically inspired. Next uh, is the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 1939, designed by Javier Romero and published by GMT Games in 2010. This is a classical hex and counter war game. And uh, you can see the map again uh, with units on it and with the with the turn track and reinforcements that come come in during the game. Uh, again, we have odds based combat results table. The militarization plays a major role. So um, I believe the game is kind of divided into sections and. Uh, as historically, the armies on, of both sides are getting better and better, especially for the Republic, of course. They are 
trying to, to rebuild a new Republican army, a people's army from scratch, actually. Then we have resource points in the game which are used to, to rebuild um, destroyed units and an event chip pull system or mechanic, I should say, in the game. So yeah, there we have the, the historical events. And next is Crusade and Revolution, the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 1939, designed by David Gomez Reyoso and uh, published by Fordados or Cuatro Dados, I should say, and uh, Compass Games in 2013. Uh, this game is a point-to-point -point game, as you can see on the map here. It's a card-driven and has a deck drafting mechanic. There are actually, uh, I believe, th uh, three, three decks per side uh, that kind of re represent or, yeah, let's say represent the, the three major phases of the war. So, War of the Columns, um, War of, I don't know, what's the middle one? It's War of the Columns, the first, so kind of militia warfare. Then it's mobilization, I believe, so rebuilding the Republican army especially. And then War of the Armies at, as the third part. And uh, yeah, as you can see, all these games, the link is here down here on the screen. Um, I will put it in the video description. Yeah, and we have factions again in this game and again they influence which units can stack together and which not and uh, i believe that's it now ah of course there is 1936 guerra civil uh, designed by arturo garcia and published in his own uh, or by his own um, little publisher ediciones rotura the game is out of print, has been published in 2006 and is a card game also with a deck drafting mechanic. So uh, at the beginning of the game, you gonna or each player is going to to draft a deck and select specific cards he want to use or they want to use, I should say, uh, during the game. And then there is hand management and so on. And... This, this game has a high emphasis on the factions. They play a major role, so every card has um, has impact on the influence the factions have and so on. And there's economics and obviously politics as a main, as a main uh, theme or subject of the game, but not so much warfare as you can see here. Now, obviously, uh, if you go to the to geek lists I mentioned previously, you will find there are many tactical hacks and counter war games beside those that I showed you that played on uh, the strategical level on um, showing or depicting the whole war. There are many games about specific battles. Let's say Guadalajara, Jarama, Brunete, Teruel, and so on and so on. You can find them on BGG, of course. So, and some of those tactical battles or tactical games uh, come with solitaire modules. But when it comes to solitaire games as such, there aren't many. Um, so... What's different now, or what what could you expect would be different with my game compared to those uh, existing already? Now, as I said, there aren't many solitaire games, so a solitaire game at the strategic level um, depicting or representing the Spanish Civil War would be quite unique. There is only one game I believe I found so far, which is We Saw Spain Die, published in 2016, designed by Lionel Liron, and uh, it's out of print. I couldn't f 
find it anywhere on the on the on the web. So this is a solitaire game, but the player is playing the nationalists. We have again an area control map and the shit pole event system and I believe shit pole activation. I'm not sure about that right now. So I want to do a solitaire game on the strategic scale which is not available right now there is none out there then i want to do a hex encounter war game so solitaire hex encounter war game as i said this one here we we saw spain die which is no longer available is area control but i want to do hex encounter war game and I want to keep it accessible, which means more of a Napoleonic 20 style than a monster game. So uh, easier to play maybe than the GMT, Spanish Civil War 1, and obviously then a smaller in map scale. And I want to do or want to have the game a strong emphasis on the political struggle within the Republic. So we saw Spain die and this game you play the nationalists. I want the player to play the Republic. So against the so-called nationalist rebels. And uh, yeah, be it shall be a hex encounter war game as I said, but I want to have this emphasis on the political struggle. So in my opinion, most of the war games we have today or that have been published um, ignore the political and economical struggle or the these dimensions so to say um, that exist obviously besides the clean uh, operational military level the, the combat as such so I believe this is especially thinking about the Spanish Civil War an emphasis on the political struggle is or would be quite interesting because on both sides but mainly on the side on the Republican side there are so many different factions with different interests that are somewhat bound into the Frente Popular, so the, the popular front, the government. And uh, I have a list here of the main or the major factions of the Spanish Civil War for both sides. And as you can see, there are quite a lot and obviously all these kind of factions or parties and, and unions and so on they have um, smaller groups in them with different interests and so on and uh, differences between the leadership and the base and all these kind of things which are really the core of the Spanish Civil War or this whole era and um, played a major role in how this war went. So it's not just based on the military, uh, the combat and so on but also on these on the political complex which then uh, interferes with the economical one and so on and so on and i want to depict this in the game so that's the difference now that you know what my idea or my basic concept of the game is the the basic kind of Sketch what I want to do, what I want to have in the game. Let's talk about mechanics. And as I said, uh, if I'm doing a solitaire game, I need some sort of AI. So the game needs to make some decisions in a solitaire system. So, for example, this is unit movement and deciding where to attack, how to use resources, influence, whatever. Uh, will be in the game and I believe there are three main mechanics or let's call them uh, solitaire systems or mechanics actually they, they are mechanics but well first one is flow charts so you have a simple if then 
formula and you follow the flowchart and answering whether specific um, things are given on the map or in the game right now or not and then you go and at some point you have the decision so that's what the game will do what the enemy will do and this is a, a good option i believe to react or to allow the ai to or the game the enemy to react to the current situation in detail but it is a very complex and time consuming thing to check for the solitaire player because he has to to go through the flowchart again and again and again and that's kind of tiring so i don't think that's that's the way to go in a modern solitaire game and of course there are many many good examples uh, that use flowcharts as bots or ai so coin series although they now have with gandhi a a card based ai or you can think uh, empire of the sun which has the erasmus bot and uh, this kind of decides which cards to play and where to attack with how many units and so on and so on but as i said i believe that's not that's not feasible or does not fit to the scale of the game that i want to have next is the chit pull system so you draw chits from randomly from a pool from an opaque uh, container and um, there are various kinds, so I have listed here the Devils to Pay, which has uh, chits for unit activation, so you, the player cannot or does not know uh, which formations or unit will be activated on his turn, because this is um, based on the random chit draw, or chit pull, however you want to call it. And then there is another... Um, Another use of this mechanic, for example, in Charlemagne Master of Europe by Holland Spieler, this is a very interesting um, version of the chip pull mechanic, I would say, because in Charlemagne you have three containers and there are many, many chits in there, enemy units and... Um, conspiracy uh, shits and so on and uh, vikings and all these kind of things and you start with a specific relation to specific factions in the game so they might spawn in the friendly cup and then there is the hostile cup and the enemy cup and Every time you do an action in the game, you draw a number of chits from the enemy cup, which come out on, on the map, or placed on the map, or if it's a conspiracy, um, it's going to be resolved immediately. And uh, so every action you take will change the number of chits or randomly kind of rotate shits around from friendly to hostile from hostile to enemy and then from enemy to the game uh, or sometimes back from from uh, hostile to friendly or whatever really interesting uh, approach here and a third is the card driven uh, mechanic which i believe is the best of both worlds so the the, combines the best um, features of chit pull and flowchart because in a card driven game or a card driven AI or mechanic you can combine randomness by shuffling the deck of course and the, the if then so as I said I think of Gandhi the new coin game there you have you draw uh, a card from the ai deck and then you have i don't know if that then then place x number of units somewhere so you can combine these two things and you could also uh, put uh, events on the card so you have 
events and then some flavor text maybe if you have enough space uh, on the cards and then this this formula if certain things are going on then do this and that as the ai or for the ai you can have specific decks for phases yeah right you can and you could do some uh, different uh, chit pools so to say for for different phases but i believe the card decks are easier to handle and you could add cards to the deck in reaction of specific actions or events uh, that happen in the game which i will come back later to this idea yeah the problem with card driven mechanics is that they have to stay somewhat the cards or the flavor text or whatever have to stay somewhat vague because of the randomized chronology which means if I have a, a deck of cards with historical events that obviously uh, had a specific historical chronology and I shuffle them, the chronology is gone and then maybe um, certain, certain aspects or reasons why specific um, events happened uh, do not make any sense any longer but yeah you have to to somewhat um, play around with this and avoid to to be too detailed maybe on the cards and again a playing card is no book so as i said you can only add a specific amount of text on a card yeah that's that and examples for card driven uh, mechanics or games I have here enemy action are dense, so you use a deck of cards for formation activation uh, of enemy forces. So let's say, I don't know, f draw a card and then fifth army and all its units are activated. And I believe there are also um, the targets or the, the decision where the enemy units will attack on these cards, but I'm not sure I haven't played the game yet. And then on tactical level, you can uh, think of Conflict of Heroes Eastern Front solo expansion, with has, uh, which has a simple if-then variation on each card. Good. So card-driven is the way for me to go. At least that's what I'm, I'm uh, rambling around with right now. Now, after the AI or the basic uh mechanics um let's think about representation and remember i want to have a solitaire political hex encounter war game so i need an ai i need card decks because i decided to go card driven and influence tracks and so on and so on because i want this political struggle which needs to be depicted somehow or represented somehow in the game and of course then i need a map i need units and i need um, routes for combat or combat mechanics so let's talk about implementation um what's a board game without a board so first of all is the map you can see here a very very early prototype i made with inkscape some time ago a few months ago so this is a really really basic prototype of terrain and and main features of the spanish peninsula or the iberian peninsula i, sh I should say and then um the map uh, needs to be or it need to to show cities and maybe roads or, or railways and i don't know i'm i'm still thinking about so this is kind of all the ideas i have right now in my head and in my in my design book and so on um i put in this presentation here to show you what i'm i'm thinking about so maybe there will also be regions on the map but i believe the map is too too small for that i have to see how i can do this then maybe some AI guidance 
but I don't I think so. If I have an, a card deck, I don't need them. Then airfields, harbors maybe, but always remember, don't overcrowd your map. Um, at some point, you have so many informations on the map that the player simply cannot read the map anymore. So you need to avoid that. Then, uh, somewhere on the board, I need some tracks for political support, maybe for resources, maybe for diplomacy. I'm still not sure how to depict uh, diplomacy in the game. Maybe a some kind of space for the card decks, but I believe they, they could be placed somewhere else. Then maybe combat resolution tables. Still not sure how I want to the combat to be resolved. I'm working on that soon. And yeah, modified tables and so on. Sequence of, of play should be on the board, I believe. Next, the card decks. So I need a player deck, I need an AI deck. And as I said, I'm thinking about adding a reaction deck or reaction decks for both sides, maybe. And I want to split the decks, so the player deck and the AI deck, into three phases. So I need three decks per side. And the cards, they shall have historical events, which then lead to specific decisions uh, or uh, give the, the player and the AI some decision space. Um, maybe contradicting options and uh, political actions, military activations, maybe economic things, I don't know. Uh, I have done the, the historical research of the period. Um, yeah, I, have, I still have some books on my, my reading list, but uh, the main research is done. And so I believe I could start putting together some cards very soon um, I will see how that works out and if I'm not uh, maybe I, I'm I, I want too much for the cards I feel that could be the case right now so too many informations too many text or too much text sorry um, yeah I see and then um, I'm thinking about some kind of strategic redeployment cards for the AI because um, as you might know the Spanish Civil War uh, did not see continuous military actions all along the front but at specific uh, sections of the front and in specific areas and yeah Especially the nationalists did quite some strategic redeployment. Obviously, the Republic did so too, but uh, that's a thing the player could do on his own. But the AI needs to decide how to redeploy units. But maybe this is a thing so that the, the redeployment deck or redeployment card is a thing I'm gonna kick out of my concept because, again, the map scale should be relatively small and then the reaction decks as i said um uh, similar to the the three shit cup uh, mechanic in uh, charlemagne i want to have the events taken by the player or the ai and the actions um uh, the respective actions uh, to have some kind of consequence uh, which yeah which uh, should show themselves or play a role uh, at some point in the game so maybe the player um, takes decision or option I don't know X and in the third phase of the game because of his re uh, action there will be some kind of consequence 
so really uh or let's say later in the game at some point so maybe in this in the second deck so in the middle phase of of the spanish civil war and the game or in the late phase and to give it some vi very variety sorry and some replayability uh, i believe reaction decks could be a good option on the other hand and please let me know what you think about it and all of my ideas so far obviously that could um make the the administration of gameplay so to say too complex for for the player so one would need at least two reaction decks one for the player one for the ai and then maybe even split these two decks into uh, three segments um uh respectively to the three uh, three phases in the game yeah i believe i need to to rethink this and see how it works once i have uh once i have made the the play cards okay so next thing will be units in combat and I have to confess, as a first-time Hex Encounter war game designer, uh, I have some problems with this with the units, especially with unit scale and strength. So to start kind of designing units and give them strength points and so on from scratch is a a difficult a thing for me i believe or i feel um because i i fear to to do it wrong maybe yeah it's simply that to get it wrong so if you have any tips and tricks how to get started with uh, unit design for hex encounter games please let me know um Obviously, I'm aware of the, the 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 approach. Start with the weakest unit, and then design all other units from that point. But I'm not sure what what is a the weakest unit. Can you tell this in in, in an ob yeah, objective way when it comes to to combat? There are so many factors in combat that have an influence on combat resolution, so to say, or the the effects of combat and, and how a unit will behave in, in combat. So even the weakest unit could at some time and point uh, kind of beat a much stronger unit. So that's uh, where I'm struggling right now. So if you if you have any tips for me, please post them in the comments or send me an email or whatever. Uh, I would be very grateful. Then I believe I want to have something like a command test, maybe that can be combined with the with the card decks. Um, because especially if on the Republican side, the division commanders in the middle and late phase of the war which were uh, column commanders or brigade commanders in the early part did not um, i wanted to say behave very well maybe, maybe that was the case too but they uh weren't good division commanders, you know, so they were good brigade commanders and column commanders, but they had no idea how to handle divisions. And that had quite some impact on the military success of, uh, or the military failure, I should say, of the Republican forces. 
Okay, then morale modifiers. Um, I'm still not sure if I should uh, put those in or not. If I have a die roll based or odds based, and then um, uh, a die roll to decide the, the combat resolution, that would be somewhat in or somehow in the in the in the die roll. Yeah, I'm rambling around here, you know. Then I'm thinking about commander abilities or headquarter abilities, I should say, because I want to have headquarter activation. So activate a whole force, not single units. That would would make it much easier to um, to to do or to implement the the, the activation for the AI, and. On, in my opinion, it's it's this way. If you have a mechanic for the AI, use it for the player too. Don't uh, let the player use another mechanic and kind of has uh, have to deal with two different mechanics for the AI and for himself or themselves. I should say. Sorry. Yeah, that's my my stance there on on uh, mechanics and solitaire games now then regarding to units and combat how does the ai decide where to attack uh well i already said maybe i can um, just include it into the card deck or add uh, another deck of cards and <laughs> as you can see many many cards for this game uh, and as as cards are the the most expensive part of board game production, yeah, I believe I should get rid of some of those ideas I have here regarding cards, right? But well, um, maybe that's something for later, for sometime in the future. So then. Besides combat, as I said, politics shall be a major part of the game. So I need influence tracks for factions on uh, government institutions, if there are any, or if they can be called government controlled uh, whatsoever. Uh, then I want to depict the struggle between the various factions on both sides. There obviously was also political struggle between the the factions on the on the rebel side and yeah maybe you can have uh, specific actions to be only possible to take if the influence of faction x is the highest or whatever and i just um, stumbled upon a blog uh of rex byron which is called pax zims you can see the link down there and he is this he um he organized a a very big war game on the iraq iran war i believe and uh, in this paragraph uh, cited here he uh, describes how he implemented yeah kind of the the struggle between the factions on each side so for example on the Iraqi side and he he went the following way the interior minister choose a faction to blame and then some chips were added to to this faction or to this, this decision or whatever and if there is at some point in the game a specific number of chits then something will happen it will have some consequences for the game and as you can read players could reduce the chances of an incident by allocating resources to alleviate the pressure or instead allocate ships to the opposing team to increase the pressure on them so now um, in this game 
Rex Bryan did. Uh, there were many, many players. I don't know how many there were on each side, but many players. And now I am, I've started thinking about how to, to take this approach and implement it into my solitaire game, maybe. And yeah, politics uh, should have an impact on combat and economy as well. I mean, that's obvious and uh, maybe even on supply assignments. So you might know during the Spanish Civil War, the Communist Party of Spain, which actually played a very minor role uh, before the, the Civil War, um, kind of rose to power by the... Um, because of the the support of the Soviet Union and Stalin, um, which was actually the only major uh, supporter who who sent weapons and equipment and so on to to the Republic and and officers and pilots and tanks and tank crews and so on, and uh, yeah, that way the communists establish control over the army and many uh, ministries and so on um, and as they had control of these institutions they also uh, took care that the communist led divisions and troops got a supply instead of let's say anarchist units and then there is again diplomacy but I'm um, uh, to this point right now I have no idea how to edit um, just because I haven't spent any thoughts on it so that is that there had been some uh, diplomatic uh, um, I'm looking for the right word. So the, 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 the Republic tried to especially influence France, which at this point had a popular front government too, uh, like Spain had, or the Spanish Republic had, and they tried to, to somewhat get or gain the, the help and support of the Western allies, France, Great Britain and the US. But as you know, they, they failed because of the appeasement politics and uh, yeah the, the fear, especially of France, uh, of a German declaration of war and... Uh... Right, so these are my first thoughts on the game so far. As I said, I, I, I think I'm quite done with the historical research I could start um, writing the cards but right now I'm more or rather thinking uh, thinking sorry about the the units and combat so if you have any hints for me or uh, ideas tips I don't know resources I could use uh, please let me know you can drop me a message on Twitter at LP or write me an email uh, to lepeticapo at web.de or go check out my uh, board game geek account. It's also lepeticapo. You just you can find it there. Send me a PM or whatever, or just comment down below in the comments here on YouTube if you like. Uh, I would really appreciate uh, your thoughts, your ideas, your opinion on my concept I showed you here. And I plan to do uh, videos in the future. So when I'm, I'm starting to really make my prototype and so on to take you with me on a journey. Um, yeah, through through solitaire game design mainly um, but on the other hand probably that will take some some time 
uh, um, till the next video will be up or next videos because this is a hobby project for me and I have many other projects running so bear with me um, yeah but again your feedback is valuable as it says here please share resources tips and tricks you know um, obviously I'm I'm also reading various blogs and I'm uh, at Board Game Geek and checking out designer forums there and so on. But yeah, you might have more experience with solitaire game design. So if you think there is anything that could help me, please post it. And uh, I hope it, this this kind of design sketch or concept I I showed here was um, was of interest to you and thanks for listening if you're still listening and uh, see you on the next one bye